What are Pythagorean triples and how can they save you on your math test, whether it be the Praxis Core, the elementary education, the ACT, the SAT, any math exam, Pythagorean triples will save you. I'm going to talk about it today. Let's get started. Okay, so Pythagorean triples are a group of numbers you can memorize that represent legs of a right triangle. And by memorizing these Pythagorean triples, you can avoid having to do the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the perimeter of a right triangle. Let's hop over to my presentation so I can show you what I'm talking about. So let's say on the exam, you are given this particular figure and you know it's a right triangle because there is this little square here. Now remember on the exam, it has to have that little square indicating it's a right triangle or it has to say it in the question stem. Just because it looks like a right triangle doesn't mean it is. They have to indicate it with this little square here. That means a right triangle or they'll say it in the question. In the below right triangle, find the perimeter, okay? Now, typically, when we want to find the perimeter of a triangle, we would use the Pythagorean theorem. It has to be a right triangle, not just any triangle, a right triangle. And that would be A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, if you haven't been in a math class in a while, I'm sure you had nightmares about the Pythagorean theorem, and that's it's fine. It's easy peasy. Don't worry about it. But A and B are the short legs of the triangle. A and B are always going to be here. And it doesn't matter which one they are. You don't have to worry about that. C is always, always the hypotenuse. This equals C squared has to be the hypotenuse. You can change these legs. B can be A, A can be B. It doesn't matter. But C always has to be the long leg or the hypotenuse. Now, if you have two legs out of the triangle, you can figure out the other leg. So if you were going to find the perimeter of a triangle and you have two legs, so let's just say we have a nine and a 12 here. Uh, a is nine and B is 12. You might say, oh, well, let me go ahead and figure this out, right? So you would do A squared, which would be nine squared, plus 12 squared equals C squared. We don't know what C is, right? So we would do 81 plus 144 equals C squared. 81 plus 144 is 225 equals C squared. Well, if I want to find out C squared, I would square root both sides and I would get 15 equals C. So C would be 15, right? Now that takes some time. And you got to make sure you don't screw it up. And they don't always come out perfectly. You might get a decimal. Um, you might get, a, a you know, a, a whole number plus a square root of something doesn't always come out even. That's why the Pythagorean triples are so important to remember because they'll save you all this Pythagorean theorem nonsense. Now, the the triangle I just did for you, the 9, 12, 15, is actually a Pythagorean theorem. That means whenever A is 9 and B is 12, C is always 15. Whenever C is 15 and, nine, and A is 9, B is always 12. This is a 9, 12, 15 triple. So here are all the triples. Let me just list them for you. The most common triples you will see on the exam. And then we're going to do a problem that's very intensive where the Pythagorean triple is going to save you. So three, four, five, triangle. That means that if one leg is three and the other leg is four, the hypotenuse is always five. If the hypotenuse is five and this one leg is four, the other leg is three. As long as you have two out of the three measures and it falls into this triple, you can find out the other leg. Okay. So another Pythagorean triple is five, 12, 13. So five, 12, 13, same thing. If one side is five and the other side is 12, then the hypotenuse is 13. So let's say you have this five and this 13. Well, if I memorize the Pythagorean triple, I don't have to do the Pythagorean theorem to figure it out. I can just go, oh, that's 12 because I know my triple. Another triple is six, eight, 10, same thing. If one leg is six, the other leg is eight, the hypotenuse is 10 or whatever two measures you have. 
And another Pythagorean triple that we just did is 9, 12, 15. And the final, one of the most common is 15, 20, 25. If you can kind of remember these, this will help you on any math exam. Now, let me show you when you will see Pythagorean triples used in questions. You can almost guarantee when the question is really complex and you have to do a ton of different operations, they're going to throw you a bone with the triangle you are evaluating is going to be a Pythagorean triple. Let me show you what I mean. All right. This comes from our Praxis 5003 online course and book. And this is part of the coordinate plane. And this can be sort of difficult. Uh, this is a tough one. We have to plot the points and find the area of the rectangle with the coordinates. Okay. So there's a lot of steps in this situation. You might be saying, well, it says rectangle, not triangle. Bear with me. Let's have a look. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw my X and Y axis. This is Y. And I'm going to pull my X axis down a little bit because I can see this 11 here is on the Y um, positive. So it's going to be way up top. So I want to make room for it. Okay. So let's start to plot these different areas on this. So I'm already in over my head, right? I got a lot going on. I have the coordinate plane. I have a rectangle and I have to find the area here. Okay. So let's plot it. So we have positive two up zero. So one, two up zero. It's going to be right there. Then I have six comma three. So I have three, four, five, six, one, two, three. So let's go there. Then I have negative four, eight. So I go over to the left, one, two, three, four, and then up eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then I have zero comma 11. So I have X is zero, which is right here in the middle. And I have to go up 11. So this dot is at eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay. Now I can see that this has got four coordinates. And if I draw my rectangle here, I can see that they're making it hard on me. I can't just find the area based on the units and the squares because it's tilted. So now what do I have to do? I actually, in order to find the sides of this rectangle, this side and this side, to multiply them to get the area, I have to figure out this triangle here so that I can find the hypotenuse because the side of the rectangle is the hypotenuse. See that? Now I can almost guarantee when you have something this complicated, they are going to give you uh, an easy way out with the Pythagorean triple. Let's see, let's do this little um, triangle here. Let's figure out, we want this hypotenuse here so we can figure out the area of the tri of the rectangle. So let's find out this leg here. So we've got one, two, three, four. So this leg is four. And then we have one, two, three. This leg is three. It's four over and three up. Three, four, five. My Pythagorean triple, three, four, five, right there. So I know this particular, um, leg, this hypotenuse, and which is the bottom side of the rectangle is five. Now, if I was being strategic, I could go to my answer choices and see if any of my answer choices ended in a three, a two, anything where five does not go into, right? Because if I'm finding the area of the rectangle, it's going to be five times something, right? And I know if I'm multiplying anything by five, it's going to end in a zero or a five. So I made it hard, hard on you in my question. I don't, I don't let you eliminate anything, but anything any, ending in anything other than a five or a zero, you could eliminate. Unfortunately, you can't do that with this question. All right, let's find the next hypotenuse, which is this side. All right, let's look at this leg here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six, eight, 10. Remember my other Pythagorean triple. 6, 8, 10 is another one. And again, if you're being strategic on a math test and you know this is a very intense question, they will most likely throw you a bone with the Pythagorean triple. So check them first. And you can see that 6, 8, 10 is a Pythagorean triple. So now I have 10 for the long side, five for the short side. It's looking for area. Be careful. If it was looking for perimeter, we would add them all up. But in this case, we have 10 times five to find the area. And that would be 50 square units. Now, if you couldn't remember your triples, 
you could just do the Pythagorean theorem. We had these sides by counting over the unit. So it'd be three squared plus four squared equals C squared. This would be nine plus 16 equals C squared. Nine plus 16 is 25 equals C squared. Square root it, five equals C. So we could figure it out that way. And let's go ahead and check the other side of the rectangle, which is the hypotenuse of the triangle over here. So we have eight squared plus six squared equals C squared. Eight squared is 64 plus 36 equals C squared. 64 plus 36 is 100 equals C squared. Square both sides to get rid of this exponent and we get 10 equals C. Notice it works out. But had I remembered my Pythagorean triples, I wouldn't have to do all that work and I could grab it. But if you figured out this five here, you would know that the answer choice, if we're looking at area, because area is multiplying base times height, the answer choice had to be a five or a 10, ending in a five or a zero. And nine times out of 10, they'll give you like a three in A, a seven in C, and a maybe a two in D. You could cross them all out and not even have to find that extra triangle. So just be strategic. Remember those Pythagorean triples and try to save time the best you can. If you have to work it out, no big deal. You could still do it, but Pythagorean triples help. So let's go over the Pythagorean triples one more time. Let me just share that one graphic with you really quickly. And you can see they're all right here. Three, four, five, five being the long leg, 12, 5, 12, 13, 13 being the long leg, 6, 8, 10, 10 being the long leg, 9, 12, 15, 15 being the long leg or the hypotenuse. When I say long leg, I'm saying hypotenuse. And 15, 20, 25, 25 being the long leg or the hypotenuse. So write them down, get to know them. Another thing I'd like to talk to you about is our resources on my website. So let's have a look at that really quickly. If you're struggling to pass any of the Praxis exams or any exams, we have tons of resources for you at KathleenJasper.com. So all you have to do is navigate to KathleenJasper.com and we have a bunch of different study guides for all the different teacher certification exams. We even have some new practice tests for the 5001. There's some extra math practice tests here. You can see there's a lot of others too. Um, we have new audio courses. If you are taking the leadership courses or the teaching reading, we have free web webinars almost every weekend. We have study guides, Praxis Core. Many of you are taking that exam, the 5001, all of that. And I have a brand new online course for the teacher interview process. This is going to help you if you want to get a job in education and you need some help in how to conduct the interview. So I have so many resources on my website, free and paid. We are also on amazon.com and YouTube, obviously, and everywhere else. So be sure to head over to kathleenjasper.com and check out all of our resources. All right. Well, that brings us to the end. Thank you so much. And I hope you have an awesome day. Good luck on your math exam. 